Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kendrick if you are new here and today I'm going to be showing you how to start a successful Depop shop for beginners. So in this video, I will be talking about clothing, listings, packaging, and shipping. So hopefully I can help you out if you are beginning on Depop and you're not exactly sure what to do next, or if you just are thinking about starting a Depop shop and you're really interested. Depop is a great way to make some money and to empty out your closet if that's what you're interested in doing. So I really hope that these tips are helpful. I will be explaining everything about the process of my Depop shop and shipping supplies and where I get them and how I ship and everything like that. I will be dividing up this video into four sections. It will be clothing, listings, packaging, and shipping. So you can really just skip to whichever part you want by using the chapters, but if you want to learn, keep on watching. All right, first thing we have is clothing. So if you want to start a Depop shop, you have to have something to sell. So there are many ways that you can source clothes to sell. The first thing you can do is thrift clothes. It depends on how good your thrift stores are and what their prices are like. That's currently not an option for me right now because thrift stores are closed in my area because of COVID. But if thrift stores are open in your area and if you can find some really great stuff, then thrifting is definitely a great option. A lot of thrift stores have gotten a little bit more expensive over the years. So so just be careful that you're not spending too much money because you do want to make some profit. The next thing you can do is clean out your closet. If you have a lot of clothes in your closet that you don't wear that you think someone else will like to have, definitely clean out your closet because one, you're reusing clothes, which is really great. And two, you're clearing out your closet. And three, you're giving your clothes to someone who might want it. And then the last and probably one of my favorite ways to get clothes is hand-me-downs. So if you have family members that aren't wearing clothes anymore, you can just ask them for their clothes. And a lot of the time you can get some pretty cool clothes. My cousin actually works at Nike so he has a lot of Nike clothes and sometimes he just gives me like a bag of clothes that he's not wearing and sometimes they have like the tags still on them and they're really high quality pieces so ask around ask your family members about clothes if they're not using them anymore and then in terms of what clothes you actually want to start selling you want to sell clothes that people will actually want to buy so clothes that are trendy right now are definitely vintage pieces and trendy name brand pieces those are pieces that sell really really well right now it's winter so kind of, so like hoodies and sweaters stuff like that leather pants corduroy pants jeans are really trendy right now especially like mom jeans and low-rise jeans flare jeans it really helps to just go on to depop and just go and see what people are selling and see if you have any clothes that are similar so really just doing a little bit of research really helps to see what clothes are selling and what is trendy on the app So now that you have some clothes to sell, let's get into listings. So the first thing about listings is taking pictures. Now I use my phone to take pictures. I have the iPhone 11, so the camera is pretty great. Any kind of phone camera would work really well. You can use a DSLR camera or like a real camera if you want, not necessary at all. But if you do want to do that, it's totally up to you. I just use my iPhone camera. I make sure to crop it in a square just so that it's already ready for Depop. Sometimes I like to edit the pictures. You don't want to edit them too much because if you don't want to change anything about the item so i usually just turn up the brightness a little bit and a little bit of the saturation in case it's a little bit dull but you don't want to change the color too much because if it's misleading people will get upset if they buy it and it's not the color that it is in the picture so you want to have good lighting when you take your pictures i take my pictures on my bed which i have white sheets so it's perfect because it's a nice clean background you want to make sure you have a clean background as well i take my pictures in natural lighting so i just open my window you can also use studio lights if you have them again not necessary if you have natural lighting natural lighting is the best in terms of background you want to have a nice clean background i don't recommend taking mirror pictures because it's not as clean looking so i definitely recommend using a clean background if you have bed sheets that are a nice color you can use those if you have white walls like i do you can do it on the walls you can even do it on your floor as long as it is clean obviously because people don't want to buy from houses that are when you are making your listing, you want to include lots of angles of the item. I like to include a flat lay, which is basically just a picture of the item flat on a surface. And then sometimes I will include a try on picture if it fits me nicely. And then any details that are kind of fun. I also like to include a picture of the tag so you can see the sizing, the material, and stuff like that. You can include four pictures on Depop and one video. I usually do four pictures depending on what the item is. And now in the description, I always like to describe the item. I like 
like to describe how I would style it and you always want to disclose any flaws if there's a hole in the sweater or the shirt if there are any stains on it or anything like that or if the sizing runs small or anything that would be good for the customer to know you want to include that in the description so that there are no surprises because if there are surprises then you might not be getting a good review from the customer and you don't want that you want to get good reviews so that more people want to buy from your shop you also want to include any any shop policies whether you include returns or exchanges or anything like that just make sure that your customers know especially for international shipping that's a really big one sometimes i have people purchase from my shop and they don't read my shop policies and they are purchasing from another country and unfortunately i can't send to them because they didn't pay enough for shipping because international shipping can be really expensive so you just want to make sure that your customers are aware of your policies so that when they are purchasing they know that what they are buying is what you can send if that makes any sense so yeah so once you have your items up it's really important to be patient because if you have good items then someone eventually will buy it it took me a few weeks to make my first sale on depop over a year ago so i've definitely come a long way and it definitely takes time for these things to happen a lot of people message me on depop asking me if i can review their account if i can tell them anything that they can do to change it to make to make more sales and usually if they have a great feed i usually just tell them that sales take time and you just got to be patient because sales will come eventually if you have a great shop Alrighty, so now that you have your shop ready and your clothing items on your shop, someone purchases your item. So now you have to get ready to package and ship your item. So in terms of shipping supplies, I have two types of mailers. I have these poly mailers. They have little flamingos on them. They're super cute. I got these from Amazon in a pack of 100. It was super inexpensive. I think I got 100 for like $20, which is really great. These last a long time and they're, they come in like so many different colors and stuff like that. These are also a great size because you can fit lots of stuff inside. These usually fit like a pair of pants, some t-shirts, and really anything that's like medium size. And they're also great because if you have a smaller item, you can fold it and make it so smaller to fit that item. I also have poly mailers that are a little bit bigger like for big items like jackets and stuff like that but I usually don't use that because I don't really sell that many jackets but I have them just in case. A lot of post offices sell packaging supplies. I don't recommend buying from your post office because those prices are going to be a lot higher. It is so much more inexpensive to purchase from like Amazon or Etsy or eBay just to get your items in bulk. Poly mailers are like the flat ones. They're really flexible. They're great for clothing items. So along with poly mailers, I also have some bubble mailers. Bubble mailers are obviously the packaging that has the bubble protecting. So I will use these for smaller orders. Obviously, if I have a really small t-shirt, then I can put it in here. Phone cases, anything that's small and kind of flat, I can fit in here and get ready to ship this out. Also, if you have something that's a little bit more delicate, a bubble mailer is the way to go because it will protect your item. I got these also on Amazon in a pack of I think 30 for like $10 so it's really great. You can get lots of different colors, lots of different sizes. This is just the basic medium size so there are lots of different sizes for different needs. I always like to include extras in my packages just because I think it's really fun. It's really therapeutic to package and customers love to open it up. I have these little mesh bags that I also got from Amazon in a pack of 100. They are reusable, which I think is great, so the customer can reuse it. And I always like to include some candies. I usually go to Walmart and get those big value packs of candies. Right now, since it's the holiday season, I have a bunch of these little candy canes. I also usually add Jolly Ranchers or a lollipop. Obviously, this is completely optional. You don't have to include these. I love including them because I feel like it's a fun experience for the customer to open the package. And I always get good reviews because people love the extra. If you don't want to send any extras, I definitely, definitely recommend sending a written letter or some sort of piece of paper. I used to write handwritten letters, but since I've been getting more orders, I, I ordered some business cards and business letters from Vistaprint. They have lots of different options for buying business cards and stuff, so I just have these little cards and it has a little message on it, and I include those in every order, so it's really, really helpful for when you are shipping items in bulk and you have a lot of stuff, you don't really have time to write handwritten notes for every single package. 
So now that you have your item all packed and ready to go, it is time to ship. So this is how I ship my packages. This is all based on where I live and what is accessible to me. So depending on where you live, shipping will be different. In Canada, Depop shipping isn't a thing. You can't really ship with Depop. So I ship with PayPal. PayPal is how you get your payments from Depop. So it automatically goes to your paypal make sure you have a paypal business account so that you can see those payments and get ready to ship from there paypal ships through canada post and ups i use canada post since it's just easier there are more canada post locations where i live so it's just super easy another thing about paypal shipping is that all the information is already there the buyer's address and all that information is already there so all you have to do is add the dimensions for your shipping label i will try and include it on the screen of how i do it and hopefully that helps you to see a little bit more so the easy part is to have so once the buyer's information is all in there and the address is there and your address is there you now need to measure your items so there are two important things that you need to measure and weigh your items you will need a scale and a measuring tape this is a little scale that i got from the kitchen section at walmart it is a manual scale so it doesn't require batteries it was really inexpensive i think i got this for like ten dollars all you have to do is go to the kitchen section and you can find some scales this is a manual scale so it doesn't require batteries Batteries. It's pretty big though, so it's not great for storage. There are digital scales that are super flat, a lot sleeker than this, but I like this scale because it matches like the theme of my room and stuff. It's kind of, it's blue, so it's nice and pretty. And all you have to do is put the item on top and it will weigh your item. You also might need a conversion app. I just use Google to convert because this doesn't have kilograms. This has grams and a lot of shipping providers use kilograms. So just make sure that you're aware of that and the conversions and stuff like that. If you're not sure about conversion, just google it and you should find the answer so yes this scale is from walmart it was about ten dollars i don't know if they still sell it but i'm sure they sell something like it it's a kitchen scale you can also get a shipping scale but i think the shipping scales are more expensive but this works just as well and it's lasted me so long especially since it doesn't need batteries so now that you've weighed your item you're going to need to measure it i just have this measuring tape i think i got this in a sewing kit that was like a couple dollars from the dollar store and it has inches and centimeters i measure in centimeters obviously because that is my metric system but obviously you can just measure it however you like now i ship with paypal but you can also just take it directly to your shipping provider store if you ship with ups or usps or dhl or canada post you can take it directly to the shipping provider store and get it shipped there but i like paypal shipping because you can do it all online print it out at home tape it to your package and bring it to the post office really easily and you also get a little bit of a discount and they take the money right out of your paypal balance which is super easy so all the payments are going through the same place that is why i like using paypal shipping so once you've made your shipping label you just want to print it out and tape it to your package i just use any basic packaging tape i like to use clear tape that i get from the post office any kind of clear strong tape will work and then you are ready to go you can bring it to your post office and they will scan it and then ship it off to your customer so that is how to start a depop shop again it is all about patience and it is super important that you are patient with your sales because they will come if you are selling great items you have a clean shop i guarantee you orders will come and you will be selling your items like crazy it just takes some time if you have any more questions about starting a depop shop you can comment them down below or message me on my depop or my instagram they will both be on the screen so you can check those out if you'd like i really hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys in my next video bye